you have already learned one way to multiply two vectors, the so-called inner product. You can also multiply two vectors in another way, using the so-called cross product. You can compute the inner products for all vectors as long as they have equal length. The cross product, on the other hand, can only be calculated between vectors in R3. So, what is this cross product? Why do we need it? How do we compute it? Well, first things first. In this video you will learn how to compute it and we will leave the why question for a very short moment. So, here we have two factors in R3, u and v. And written down in their components, u1 up to u3 for u and v1 up to v3 for v. And how do we compute u cross v? Well, we form the following factor over here. u2 times v3 minus u3 times v2 as first component, and you can see the other two components. So, why is it called the cross product? Well, that's due to the cross over there. So, in contrast to the inner product, or the dot product, where there was a dot over here. The cross product is also sometimes called the factor product, and that's because the outcome over here is a factor. And this again in contrast to the inner product, where the outcome was a scalar. But how do you memorize such a formula? It's horrible. Well, we have a neat little trick to do that. If we want to compute u cross v, we compute the following determinant. We put e1, e2, and e3 as first row in the matrix, and then you put the factor u as the second row, and the factor v as the third row. And then you just compute this kind of odd uh, uh, determinant. And you can see if you write it down that you get the same a u cross v as the horrible formula over here, but this one is much easier to memorize. So let's try a few examples. For example, u equals 1, 2, 3, and v equals 4, 5, 6. What do we get if we compute u cross v? Well, what do we do? We form the determinant, put e1 up to e3 in the first row, 1, 2, 3 in the second row, and 4, 5, 6 in the third row. And then we expand along the first row. So we have e1 times these 2, 3, 5, 6, minus the sign, minus e2 times the determinant 1, 3, 4, 6 over here, and then finally plus e3 times, and I sketch first row and last column, determinant of 1, 2, 4, 5. So what do we get? Here we get 12 minus 15 equals minus 3 times e1 over there. Here we get 6 minus 12 uh, with the additional minus sign, so minus minus 6 or plus 6 times e2. And then finally, 5 minus 8 equals minus 3 times e3. So there we have our cross product u cross v. So what happens if we try to compute v cross u instead? That sounds a bit silly. Well, let's try. You never know, right? So here we have v cross u. We do the same trick. Expand along the first row. So we get e1 times 5, 6, 2, 3. And we continue. Minus e2 times 4, 1, 6, 3 over here. And then plus e3 times the determinant of 4, 5, 1, 2 over here. So what do we get? 15 minus 12 equals 3. So 3 times e1. And here 12 minus 6 equals 6. Uh, with the minus sign, so minus 6 times e2. And then finally 8 minus 5 equals 3 times e3. And that's odd. You see u cross v and v cross u are not the same. You get a different answer. So you have to be careful. Actually, you see what the difference is just a sign. So u cross v equals minus v cross u. And if you remember some rules of determinants, that makes sense, of course, because if you interchange rows in determinants, what basically is what you're doing. If you uh, con compute u cross v instead of v cross u, you pick up a sign. So be careful here for, deter uh, for cross products. u cross v and v cross u are not the same. 
finally, that's try you cross you. I said, yield. He makes the matrix again, the determinant, so E1 times this one, minus E2 times that determinant, plus E3 times this determinant over here. And if you compute this, we get 6 minus 6 equals 0, 3 minus 3 equals 0, and 2 minus 2 equals 0. So 0 times E1 plus 0 times E2 plus 0 times E3 equals the zero vector. So not the zero number, but the zero vector. So if you take the cross product of u with itself, you get the zero vector. But that also won't surprise you, if you know something from determinants, because now we have a determinant with two equal rows, and determinants with two equals rows, always you something like zero. So we know how to compute cross product. We found two rules already. u cross v equals minus v cross u and u cos u is always a zero factor. So uh, now you might wonder, uh, well, why do you compute the cross product in such an odd way? What are the properties? Well, that will be the subject of some next web lectures. <laughs>